Okay, welcome back guys to another video from CXC, my tutor. So in this video, we'll be looking at the New York State Common Core Regents Algebra 1, June 2019 past paper. And we'll be looking at questions 19 to 24. So questions 19 to 24 from the New York State Common Core Regents Algebra 1, June June 2019. All right, so the, uh, given the following three sequences, so one, you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, you have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 3, you have A, A plus 2, A plus 4, A plus 6, and A plus 8, and so on. All right, uh, which ones are arithmetic um, sequences? So remember, in general, that the arithmetic sequence takes on the form, for example, A plus um, n minus one multiplied by d, all right? Um, where a represents your first term and d represents what you call a common difference. So this is your first term. And the d represents your common difference. Common difference. That's a number that you keep adding, uh, subtracting um, from the previous number in order to get the next number in the sequence, all right? So as long as you keep adding or subtracting the same number to the previous number in order to get the next number in the sequence, then it's an arithmetic sequence, all right? So let's just see here. Um, looking at number one, all right? So our first term is two, all right? Our next term is four then six, then eight, and then 10. So you can see that we keep adding by two here, right? Because two plus two give us four, four plus two give us six, six plus two give us eight, eight plus, eight plus two, so two here, eight plus two give us 10 and so forth. So the common difference here is two. That's a number we keep adding by to the previous term in order to get the next term, all right? So number one is definitely a arithmetic sequence. Okay. Number one is arithmetic sequence. Number two, um, <coughs> by the way, if, if you want to find a common difference, you always take the number in front, subtract the number previous. So take any two terms, right? And, and you take the number in front of those two terms and subtract the number previous. So if I take the two terms, for example, two comma four, then four minus two gives me two, that's my common difference. Or if I take the two terms six comma eight, and I take the number in front, which is eight, minus the number previous, which is six, eight minus six gives me two. So it doesn't matter which two terms you take. If you wanna take term eight and 10, and then 10 minus two give us eight, give us two, all right? So any two terms you, you take, you take the number in front and subtract the number previous, that will give you the common difference, which is two, all right? All right, that's just additional information there for you to know if you, if you need to find the common difference. Right? And the same thing with this here. I mean, I can um, I have two, four, eight here. So if I take the terms two and four, then four minus two gives me two. 8 minus 4 gives me 4, right? 60 minus 8 gives me 8. As I can see, um, I am not adding the same number. In order to, I'm not adding the same number to the previous number in order to get the next number. I'm adding different numbers, all right? So this is not a arithmetic sequence. For it to be an arithmetic sequence, you have to have this or subtract the same number, the same constant to the previous number in order to get the next number in the sequence, all right? So that's why number two is not an arithmetic sequence, all right? Um, three, uh, notice that I st my first term is A, and then my next term is A plus two, and then my next term is A plus four, all right? So what is happening here? What's going on here? So you can see I take my first term and I add two, to my first term, that gives me a plus two, which is my second term. And then I add two again to my second term 
all right? Because if I have a plus two plus two, that's gonna give me a plus four. And so I get that third term there, all right? And if I add two to this third term, so I keep adding two, I keep adding the same number, that's my common difference, all right? And this is gonna give me um, a plus six because um, two plus four is six and so forth. And if you add two to this, you're gonna get a plus eight and so forth. So the fact that you're, the fact that you're adding the same constant to the previous number in order to get the next number, that's why it's called a arithmetic sequence. Number three is also an arithmetic sequence, all right? So your answer here is choice two. All right, so you have one and two here, which are arithmetic sequence. So the answer is choice two, all right? Okay, let's move on to question 20. All right. A grocery store sells packages of beef. The function um, CFW represents the cost in dollars of a package of beef weighing double pounds, right? They are the most appropriate domain for this function would be, okay, so C of W, all right? C of W represents the cost. And this W here, which is the independent variable, represents the, um, the weight of the beef in pounds, all right? The weight, and of course the weight can only be positive numbers. It can be fractional numbers as well, because you can have a pound, you can have a weight that is 2.5 pounds, for example, or 3.5 or 3.3 pounds and so forth. All right, so, um, so choice one, no. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an integer because as I said before, um, the weight can be a decimal number, like 3.5 pounds, a three and a half pounds, you know, 10 pounds, 10.2 pounds, and so forth, all right? Um, so no, it, it, it can take on, it can take on like fractional values too as well for the, uh, for the weight, all right? Um, uh, choice three here, um, no, as I said before, the weight can be, um, fractional numbers, decimal numbers, right, as, as well, like 2.5 and so forth. All right, so choice three is no, all right. Um, choice two, rational numbers. Well, yes, rational numbers are fractional numbers, but rational numbers can also be negative too as well. All right, so we don't want to have a negative weight, and right? there's no such thing as a negative weight. Um, the weight has to be positive. All right, so even though, yes, you can rational numbers represented um, by the weight, but rational numbers can be positive and negative. So we don't want that. What we want is a positive rational number, positive rational number. And right? that would be the appropriate um, answer for question 20, all right? All right, um, 21. It's okay, so the roots of x squared minus 5x minus 4 equal to 0 are, now there are a number of ways um, you can find the roots. You can use a quadratic formula, you can use completing the square, you can even try factorization, all right, as well, using the AC method, all right? Um, I guess the fastest way here, I guess you can use, um, completing the square, um, but, but as I said before, you really have about three choices, all right? Um, to, and of course, you can actually graph this too as well, using a graphing calculator, the function x squared minus 5x minus um, four, and do a trace, or zoom in, and you can able to identify the roots, which is basically the x-intercept uh, on the graphing calculator, okay? All right, so um, let's use completing the square here. So we can, um, bring this constant over to the, the right hand side. So we have x squared minus 5x. I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to take this negative 4 here and bring it over to the right hand side. That becomes positive 4. So I just basically add 4 to both sides of the equation. All right. And I'm going to get a number here. I'm going to put a number here. Now, how do I 
know which number to put there, right? It's always going to be um, b over 2 squared. And b represents the coefficient of your x term, all right? So this is going to be negative 5 over 2 squared, all right? <coughs> so your b is negative 5. You're always divided by 2 in your square. That's going to give us 25 over 4. So I add 25 over 4 here, and I'm also going to add 25 over 4 here. All right, to keep the equation um, balanced. Remember, anything you do on one side, you have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So if you add 25 over 4 on the left-hand side, you have to also add 25 over 4 on the right-hand side. And so now this here can be written as, this is a perfect square here, which can be written as x minus 5 um, over 2 square. And this is going to equal to, um, if I combine these two fractions here, all right, um, so I can multiply the numerator and the denominator of this by 4. All right, so it'll be 16 over 4 plus 25 over 4, all right, which is going to give me 16 plus 25 is 41. Let's confirm that with my calculator. Yeah, so it's 41 over 4, all right. All right, so now, um, remember, I'm trying to solve for x here. So what I can do, I can take the square root of both sides, all right? So to get rid of that square there, so I have x minus 5 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 to 1 over um, 4, all right? And so this is, x is now equal to plus or minus the square root of, 4 to 1 over 2, because the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, all right? All right, and I just take, I just add, uh, I just add 5 over 2 to both sides of the equation, so this becomes 5 over 2 over here, okay? All right, so as you can see that um, the solutions, therefore, all right, for x, um, this can be rewritten, can be rewritten as x is equal to 5 over 2, all right, and I put this plus or minus here, plus or minus the, the square root of 4 to 1 over 2, okay? And of course, I can combine this because the denominators are the same. This is 5 plus or minus the square root of 4 to 1 over 2, all right? As you can see, that's going to be choice. 2. 21 is choice 2. All right. All right. Let's move on to question 22. Um, the following table shows the heights in inches of the players on the opening night roster of the 2015 to 2016 New York um, Knicks, all right? So these are the, the, um, the heights here in inches. So 84, 80, 87, 75, 77, 79, 80, 74, 76, 80, 80, 82, and 82. And so the population standard deviation of these data is approximately. So with a question like this, population standard de de deviation, uh, to calculate that, um, you would need a graphing calculator. All right, graphing calculator. All right, and so you can pull out your TI-84 here. And um, I have one here to show you guys. So what you would do here is to go to your statistics, um, turn on your calculator, of course, and make sure that your calculator is, is on diagnostic on. It's on diagnostic, diagnostic on. It's very, very important for you to get the correct solutions, all right? And to, by the way, to get to diagnostic on, you go to second function. Let me just um, go back here, clear that. Sorry, go back, clear, clear that, okay. So you go to second function and then you go to catalog, all right? Second function, you click on zero, which is gonna give you a catalog there. And you scroll down until you see diagnostic on. All right, diagnostic on. It should be by default. All right, but if it's not, the, um, if you're not sure if it's already on, 
you can basically go here. It's a diagnostic on, click on enter. And if you click on enter again, it should say done. All right, so you know that yes, everything is perfect. All right, so, all right. So now then you go to statistics, right? And then you click on enter, it's on edit, so click on enter. And here we'll enter your data, all right? So I already entered the data already. Uh, just to save time in the video, all right? So um, I use um, list one here. So as you can see, I have 80, sorry, 84 is the first number there, then 80, 87, 75, 77, 79, 80, and scroll down, um, 80. Then you have 74, 76, 80 again, eight. Okay, so this is, I made a mistake. This is supposed to be 80. So it's always good to double check your answer, all right? So that's 80, that's 82, and that's 82. Oh, this is supposed to be an 82. Okay, let's go back down again. So if numbers are not correct, then your, your statistics uh, your information is not going to be correct, all right? Your standard, your population standard deviation is not going to be correct. So I have 80, 80, 82, and I have 82, and I need to have an 82 again, all right? Very important to make sure you have the correct data. All right, so um, once you, ha you have all the numbers here, you just um, click on st um, uh, statistics, and then you go across to calculate, CAL, C-A-L, CAL, all right? And of course, this, this would be a single variable statistics, okay? Single variable stats. So click on, it's, it's, on, it's already on single variable um, by default. So just click enter. And of course, all of my data is in list one. So you want to make sure that you have list one there, all right? And then you scroll down to calculate and then you press enter. And then it's going to calculate the information for you, all right? So as you can see that this one here, represents your Q sub X that represents your population standard deviation, right? Which is approximately 3.49 um, for so and so forth. So if we run it to one decimal place, it's gonna give us 3.5, all right? So your answer is choice one for your population standard deviation, okay? So make sure you know how to use your, um, your graphing calculator, your TI-84, all right? All right, TI-84 plus. Okay, um, so let's move on to question 23. All right. um, it said a population of bacteria can be modeled by the function f of t is equal to 1,000, which is the initial amount, multiplied by 0 0.98 t, where T represents the time since the population started decaying. And F of T represents the population of the remaining bacteria at time T. What is the rate of decay for this population? All right, so note that um, even if they did not mention the word decay in here, just by looking at the, the factor here, it's 0 0.98 is less than one, so therefore it has to be a exponential decay, all right? So that's how you can see that, the an exponential decay. All right, so we have f of t is equal to 1,000, right? Multiply by 0 0.98 to the power of t, all right? So note that this, this is an exponential decay function, all right? So we, which is generally a of t, all right? The amount a is equal to the initial um, amount multiplied by one minus R to the power of T. This is the model for, the general model for an exponential decay function, all right? And so this one minus R here is exactly the same thing as 0 0.98. So you can set up an equation here where you have the one minus R is equal to 0 0.98, and you can solve for your R, because the R represents your, um, the, the rate of decay, which is um, in percentage, okay? Now this R here is actually a number in a decimal form. It's a decimal number. So you have to convert that decimal number 
to a percentage. That's very important, all right? So we can solve for R here by just um, uh, subtracting um, 0 0.98 from both sides. So we have minus 0 0.98, all right? And we can add R to both sides. So what I did, I, I just simply add R to both sides of the equation and, and, and I also subtract 0 0.98 from both sides of the equation, all right? So this is, I add R and I subtract 0 0.98 plus R, all right? So as you can see here, this is one minus 0 0.98, negative R plus R does cancel. All right, that's going to equal to um, 0 0.98 minus 0 0.98. That's equal to zero, and I have my R there. All right, so my R is actually going to equal to one minus 0 0.98. Using your calculator, you know, that's going to be 0 0.02 is equal to R. So this R is a number expressed as a decimal. All right, so the question wants you to find the, the rate of decay as a percentage. So you need to convert this 0 0.02 here as a percentage, okay? The 0 0.02, uh, move this to two decimal places to the right. That's going to be 2 over 100, which is the same thing as, um, which is the same thing as 2%, all right? Because 2% is the same thing, exact same thing as 2 divided by 100. So the answer is choice 2, question 23, okay? All right. Um, Question 24. Um, bamboo um, plants can grow 91 centimeters per day. What is the approximate growth of the plant um, in inches per hour? All right, so we know that um, nine to one centimeter is, is a rate, nine to one centimeter per day for one day. All right, so we need to convert this nine to one centimeter here to um, the inches, all right? Because we need, we need our answer to be inches per hour. All right, what is the approximate growth of the plant in inches per hour, all right? And so, and, and also we need to convert this one day here into hours, all right? So we know that, um, for example, that uh, 2.54 centimeter, looking at the conversion table there, 2.54 cent centimeter is the same thing as, um, as one inch, all right? It's equivalent to one inch, all right? And we also know, and therefore, if you have 92 inches, we can just simply multiply both sides here of this equation by 92, all right? So, um, so if, let me just put it, let me write, write it another, let me just write this a little bit differently, all right? So we know that one inch is equivalent to uh, 2.54 centimeter. Therefore, um, if I were to, divide both sides by 2.4, all right? 2.54, sorry, all right? Then I have, this cancel this, I have one centimeter, one centimeter is equivalent to one over 2.54 inch, okay? And so therefore 94, let me write this over here, 91 centimeter, one day okay so so if i have so one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter divide both sides by 2.5 2.54 and therefore one centimeter is going to be one over 2.54 inch i have nine to one centimeter so i can multiply both sides of this equation here by nine to one all right so nine to one centimeter is going to be um one over 2.54 uh multiply by nine to one and the answer is of course going to be in inches all right so nine to one centimeter is exactly the same thing as nine to one over 2.54 inches okay 
<coughs> also, we know that um, one day, all right, one day is the same thing as 24 hours, all right? All right? So we need our answer in inches per hour, okay? So, so we, 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 we can just um, do the conversions here, all right? So this nine to one, um, this uh, nine to one centimeter here, 91 centimeter over one day, all right? That's basically the same thing as the 2.54 centimeter, all right? Which is equivalent to one inch, all right? Um, divided and multiply by the 24 hours, all right? 24 hours, all right? That's equivalent to one day, okay? I'll show you the conversion right here um, in a more simplified form, all right? So um, basically what you have here, all right? This is 2.54, sorry, all right? So you have now, when you multiply this out, all right? You will have uh, 35.83, all right? Inches, all right? So let me just... Um, Multiply this. Um, by the way, did I make a mistake here? Let's see, nine to one. No, it says nine to one divided by 2.54. That's how I get the 35.83. Okay, if you take nine to one, so this is what I have here, this nine to one um, divided by 2.54, you get um, approximately 35.83. A tree, and if you divide that by um, the 24 hours, because I said before, one day is equivalent to 24 hours, all right? Divide that by the 24, that's going to give you um, 1.492 and so forth, all right? As you can see, that that's going to be choice one, all right, for question 24, all right? So you basically have to know the conversion, all right? So one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeter, divide both sides. You can consider this to be an equation. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeter. This is an equation, you have the equal sign there. That means, it, that, that means it, it's an equation. All right, so if I want to solve for centimeter, for example, that's why I divide both sides by 2.54, because I want to solve for centimeter, because here I'm given nine to one centimeters, all right? So I want to know what one centimeter is um, in terms of inches before I can calculate nine to one centimeter. All right, so that's where I divide both sides by 2.54. And so now I know that one centimeter is equal to one over 2.54 inches. All right, and so therefore, if one centimeter is equivalent to this, then nine to one centimeter is going to be nine to one uh, multiply by this, which is the same thing as nine to one divided by 2.54. That's how I get this 38, sorry, 35.38 here. And I also know that one day is equal to 24 hours, all right? And so let's divide this by 24 because I'm, I need my answer to be in inches per hour, all right? So that's that would be the answer um, for um, this question. Um, question 24, choice number one. And that's it for this video. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video as well. And to consider um, clicking the notification button so that you can be notified of future videos. All right? So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.